How's it going guys? Texas Man here. Uh, sorry about the technical glitch. Um, <laughs> I wasn't meaning to end uh, part six so abruptly, but there was a technical glitch and my camera just cut out, so I apologize for that. Um, thankfully though, at the uh, past video's end, we did end up concluding uh, chapter 12, The Alpha Mission Begins. So I'm just going to pick up immediately where we left off. Um, this is going to be part six, point two. And we're just going to be continuing on, and uh, hopefully my camera doesn't decide to have another meltdown <laughs> without me uh, knowing. So let's just continue on. We're going to be starting in Chapter 13, The Passion. Hope you guys enjoy. Chapter 13, The Passion. It had been two days since the group of seven, along with Alpha, left Calvary Castle, and now only five remained during the Alpha mission. The group of Peter, Lucy, Dale, Sue, and Timoneko left their campsite and battled creatures within Death Valley. After constant attackers within Death Valley, the group finally arrived at the place they had been searching for, Clay Dudair's palace. The team crept around a hideout full of troll soldiers and learned that they, along with zombies from the Great Graveyard and the Bomber Eagles from the jungle, were an alliance with Clay Dudair. The humans reached the boundary between the forest and the secret security trolls, yet were they were yet were unsure of how they would save Heaven Dragon from being executed, if he was still alive, of course. Peter looked behind the palace, using a pair of binoculars to see the following. A crowd of drunk humans, a public torture area, a hole for a cross to fit into, thousands of trolls and zombies, and a man with solid gold clothing that looked like Heaven Dragon only in human form, and another man in total darkness with the appearance of the person who was in Monster House. Peter looked behind the pal- I'm sorry. This is going to be a public torture and crucifixion by the looks of it, said Peter. Let's hope our army of soldiers, underwater tanks, and helicopters arrive soon, since it has been two days, said Dale. We may have to intervene if we want to keep our lord alive, said Peter, seeing Clay Duday release him from his bonds and the security trolls disappear from their post to deliver Heaven Dragon's first beating. We have to do something. We can't wait for our friends any longer, said Peter, loading his machine gun. Peter, there are too many. If you die also, we will not have a leader, said Tim and Echo. I will not sit here and watch Heaven, Drag Heaven Dragon die when I could have done something, said Peter. You can't do this, Peter said a voice in Peter's head. Who said that? asked Peter. No one said anything. I don't know who could it be, though. I know who could... I'm sorry. Ugh. No one said anything. I know who could be, though, said Tim and Echo. Who? asked Peter. My brother, Jesse, answered Tim and Echo. Peter, listen to me. I told Heaven Dragon about these events two days before you came to see me. He knew this would happen to him, yet he has the passion to die for a worthy cause said Jesse in Peter's head. What passion and what cause, asked Peter mentally. The passion to die so Clay Dudair can be killed forever and to cause his wrath to finally end. Allow Heaven Dragon to do what must be done. Interference will only make things worse in Revelation, said Jesse before leaving Peter's mind. Peter looked at his sister, his wife, and his two friends to consider what Jesse said. After a few seconds of thinking, Peter ordered his friends to move into the crowd of drunk people to prepare to, clay, to kill Clay Dudair once Heaven Dragon was dead. What are we going to do until Clay Dudair is, I guess, immortal, asked Sue? We wait, and we watch our Lord's passion for all of us to be executed, replied Dale. The group had placed hoods on their heads to disguise themselves in the crowd and pre pretended to act as the 5,000 drunk people that were gathering around the torture area were. Ladies and gentlemen, trolls, zombies, and bomber eagles, for the past three and a half days, I have starved Revelation's leader, Heaven Dragon. However, today I will mark the end of this creature's suffering by scourging, buffeting, lancing, stoning, pickering, and crucifying this dragon in human form, said Clay Dudair. Trolls, prepare the prisoner for torture. Clay Dudair continued. The three trolls that were nearest to Clay Dudair walked over to a table and picked up a flexible piece of wood with shards of glass, glass 
smashed into it. Lucy and Sue, you may want to shut your eyes if you don't want to witness this, said Peter. Even if this is going to be graphic, I must see what Claire Dudier did to my lord, said Lucy and Sue together. What is going on here? asked a short blonde woman to Claire Dudier. General Mickey, prepare to watch Heaven Dragon be tortured, tortured and die in human form, my sister, said Claire Dudier. You have a sister, Timoneko? asked Peter. Not that I was aware of, said Timoneko. She looks like an ordinary human, said Lucy. Maybe she is not form floral is, and is only under a spell from Clay Dudaire to succeed his rule, said Timoneko. The human covered in gold robes was locked into position to hold his legs and arms in a formation of a person on a cross. Trolls, begin the end of his suffering, said Clay Dudaire, sitting down in a fancy chair next to General Mickey. The three trolls walked in front of Heaven Dragon, a great distance away, and each threw their glass-filled stick of wood into his chest. Yes! Kill him! yelled the crowd. Tears began to roll down the faces of Lucy and Sue, while Peter, Dale, and Timinico realized this would be a mark in history for revelation. The trolls picked up other dangerous tools and began scourging and buffeting the backside of him, ripping large amounts of skin off of his body and showing his bones. Next, the trolls lanced twenty knives each at his legs and pulled the knives out also. The three trolls took a break to drink some wine while the crowd of drunk humans and zombies threw sharp stones and rotten food at his face. The crowd stopped their part of the torture and the trolls pricked, so pricked swords into his backside a total of twenty times. You could no longer recognize the man because of his appearance. He was naked, was missing parts of his skin, and had lost so much blood that he should have been dead. Shall we crucify this man? asked Clay Dudaire. Yes! yelled the crowd. Clay Dudaire, have someone be picked to help him carry his cross, said General Mickey. Why should I? asked Clay Dudaire. Look at him. He cannot carry his cross alone, said General Mickey. Clay Dudaire looked at the crowd, looking for someone that was not so drunk, and pointed directly at Peter. You, sir, come help me carry his cross to its resting place, said Clay Dudaire. Me? You want me? asked Peter. Yes, you are not as drunk as the others, said Clay Dudaire. Peter wondered if his lack of being drunk was going to end up having his head taken off, yet he still walked to one side of the cross that laid on the ground nearby. My lord, please make your way to the cross, said Clay Dudaire in an unfaithful manner. Clay Dudaire waved his hand about, and Heaven Dragon was freed from his bonds. Heaven Dragon looked at the cross and the one who was going to help him carry it. Get over here so I can get a drink, said Peter to Heaven Dragon, trying to act like the crowd of humans. Heaven Dragon slowly walked over to the cross and, with Peter's help, began carrying the cross 1,000 feet to its resting place. Peter, why have you come? Asked, Dra he had been, asked Heaven Dragon, still in human form and gulping for air. To kill Clay Dudaire and his army, said Peter. This must happen, said Heaven Dragon. I know. Jesse told me, said Peter. Then when you kill, when you kill Clay Dudaire, you must destroy his gold ring. He escaped Floral using it and will come back to life if it is not destroyed. You must destroy all the parts of him or else your world, Tot, will be next for his wrath, said Heaven Dragon, gulping for air. Suddenly, the cross fell into its resting place and Peter was told to leave. It will be finished soon, said Heaven Dragon to Peter before he returned to the crowd. Clay Dare moved to the front of the humans, zombies, and tall blue-colored trolls to see him on his knees. Cladier used his powers to lift him into position on the cross, inserted nails into his hands and his feet, and used a sword to chop off his left ear. Here, Heaven Dragon will remain in human form forever until he dies and is no more, said Cladier. Hooray! Yes! exclaimed the crowd of humans, trolls, and zombies. Moments later, Peter, Lucy, Dale, Sue, and Tim and Echo lifted their heads for only a few seconds to see that their Lord had been crucified for them. 
and revelation, and that he was dead. Suddenly, a loud sound came to the ears of the group around the cross, and a troll scout used his binoculars to see an underwater tank rising above the water, moving north to the great graveyard. Sorry for the alarm, but it was just some odd tank coming out of the water, said the troll scout. Kaboom! The troll scout looked again to see 1,000 underwater tanks transform into machine gun and cannon tanks with four humans in each of them, 10,000 humans and other creatures with rifles, and 5,000 helicopters with one pilot in each of them. The troll scout looked to see a cannon had destroyed a part of Clay Dudaire's palace and one coming at him. However, there was no time to react. We are under attack, yelled General Mickey. Tabernacle, teleport us to our allies except for me, said Peter. Why are you not coming with us, asked Lucy. Because I have to kill Clay Dudaire and destroy his ring, said Peter. Tabernacle, Dale, Sue, and Lucy disappeared from Peter's sight and were transported inside of a tank. Where's Peter? asked Panda to the group in the tank. He's going to kill Clay Dudaire and destroy the object that freed him from Floral, said Dale. This is General Ted firing the cannons and General Phil using the machine gun. They are the new leaders under your family and have a dragon for his army since the passing of General Matthew and Captain Knight, said Panda. General Phil and General Ted said hello to the group and continued ordering their troops to destroy Clay Dudaire's palace. What are our numbers? asked Dale. We have a total of 19,000 troops, said Panda. We destroyed the troll hideout on our way here, so we have about 1,000 trolls with swords, 600 zombies, and 100 crazy humans left to fight. That is only 1,700 against our 19,000, said General Phil. Where are our five dragon friends? asked Sue. They are at Calvary Castle, rebuilding it, replied General Ted. This is all good news. So, let's end Clay Dudaire's wrath, shall we? said Lucy. Understood, Commander Lucy, said General Phil, blasting ten trolls with his machine gun. While the two armies battled each other, Clay Dudaire's palace was destroyed by the unending bombardment of cannons and missiles from tanks and helicopters. As the battle raged on, Peter watched Heaven Dragon turn back into a dragon, come back to life, escape the bonds of the cross, and turn five trolls into walking candlesticks. Find Clay Dudaire and end his wrath forever, said Heaven Dragon to Peter. Peter dashed away from the cross and saw Clay Dudaire and General Mickey running into the forest south of the Great Graveyard. Peter created a sword and raced after them to complete the purpose of his passion. It's